behind it. This to the puzzle as we're getting this experience. So I don't look at 12 rounds with a guy who many feel like I could have stopped as a defeat or a loss. I look at it as progression. But what it is is that no one really knows him because he's never fought anybody. So we don't know if he could even be stopped. Right. So yeah. I, and, and that's the thing, too. I've said leading up to this fight that you have to respect a guy like this because a lot of people in the inner circle, the boxing world, know this guy and the respect, he has respect amongst the boxing community. He's just not known to the world. And that's why I had to be on my A game and expect, you know, his very best. Congratulations, Daniel. Thank you. I know this week you've been sort of avoiding looking further than Lewis Arias and yeah. the respect that he deserves. Absolutely. Now that's done, who would be your number one target if, if Eddie Earn could make something happen for you? My number one target? I mean, how do you say a number one target in a division with so many different great contenders and champions? Obviously, I want to go for the best. Um, but if it doesn't happen, then we have a list full of guys that we can pursue. And it's ultimately about really what the fans want and what makes sense. With uh, David Lemieux and Billy Joe Saunders being tied up, as we spoke about, yeah. it looks like Canelo Golovkin's going to be potentially tied up. Does that leave Charlo? Would that be the fight to take your book? Charlo, like I've said before, I want to fight the very best. And uh, Charlo just moving up to the middleweight division. Um, you know, some would say he has a lot to work for. Some would say uh, he hasn't really proven anything to be calling out these big names and stuff like that, but I'll definitely give him a shot. What about some of the British guys who just had that exposure back in the UK? Yeah. There's, there's some great middleweights back on the UK shores, of like Martin Murray, I'm sure you would jump on an opportunity. Does that interest you? Does that mm. think you I'm not sure if Martin Murray makes sense. I think that's going a little bit further down the line. I respect him, but I just think we want fights that make sense. We want fights that's going to catapult our careers to the next level, not fights where people expect us to win. Okay. Yeah. You had a lot of success out of the southpaw position. Uh, I think maybe even the knockdown occurred when you had switched to southpaw. Oh, I didn't. I, I forgot it. It was a. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I forgot a knockdown. Uh, is that something that maybe we can see come out earlier in your fights, or do you wish you had kind of switched around earlier? Because it seemed to confuse them. Well, I mean, I just really, once my jab was flowing, I just stuck to what worked. Um, and I switched southpaw to see if I can get the knockout because I wanted to go for overhand left. But. It's just how I feel in the middle of the ring. It's how I feel in the, in the moment, and it comes out when it's necessary. But I love switching softball, as you've seen. I've been doing it my whole entire career. I'm pretty good at it. I could be better, right, Pops? <laughs> could be a lot better, but this is a, boxing is a forever going learning process, and I'm always going to be a student of the game. But it seems like you're more effective from the softball stands. Could you fight an entire fight? I believe I can fight an entire fight. Um, but Not you gotta yet. understand. Not yet. <laughs> All right, Andre. Don't talk my baby. All right. <laughs> Don't talk my baby into trying. It. Not yet. But see, you gotta understand. <laughs> I, I have respect for this game, and when you're at an elite level, you have to fight elite and. Um, fight an entire fight, Southpaw. I don't know. I mean, I would love to do it, but, you know, I have to choose wisely who I do it against. 